Um, mathematical ploys for flammy boys and don't forget out to and don't forget to check out I don't know something else probably Hey, hey, what's up? I didn't insult you guys or anything. I was just talking nice things about you, my boys. So let's go ahead and get started. Today we are going to integrate the phi air kernel of the nth degree from negative pi to pi. And there's something curious about those summability kernels right here. Most of the time, the integral over a period is going to give us one. Is this the case here too? You are going to see, I'm not going to spoil you guys. And there are two definitions of the Fayet kernel we have derived up until now. One with those sine squared over sine squared thingies and one with being the final summation of Dirichlet kernels. So let's start off with the latter definition I just said. This is going to give us integral from negative pi to pi of, okay, this is one over n times this finite sum running from zero to n minus one. So Papa from the future isn't going to come today. I'm doing it right this time. Of the Dirichlet kernel of the nth degree with respect to tau integrated with respect to tau. Okay, why not bring this one over n to the outside? Also, this is just a finite summation so we can just interchange those two. It's not a matter of limits. So we are going to get one over n times the sum running from zero to n minus one of, okay, the integral, negative pi to pi. One definition of the Dirichlet kernel was that it is nothing but one over two times pi times the sine, that was my phone, I'm terribly sorry, of n plus one half times tau of sine tau over two, integrated with respect to tau. And now you might say, but Papa, Baba, Herr Gevater entzündlich, what the fuck are you doing? This is just one. Then we are basically done. Yeah, I know this integral is going to evaluate to one, but I would like to give some props to a boy from actually good math problems because he had solved this right here in a pretty genius way. And yeah, I just want to present it to you guys because I just thought it's such a cool approach to this problem right here. I just have to make a video on it. So thanks to you, my boy, we're going to take a look at this very integral right here. So let us define some i with respect to capital N being nothing but the integral we had down here. So from negative pi to pi. Also, let's bring the one over two times pi to the outside. Then we have sine of n plus one half times tau over sine of tau over two d tau. And also I would like to introduce another integral, namely i of n minus one. So just what we have here, but with the degree changed, okay? Being equal to one over two times pi. Integral from negative pi to pi, okay? And then we are going to get sine of n minus one plus one half. So this is n minus one half. Sine of n minus one half times tau over sine of, well, this is just tau over two. It's just going to stay how it is. Integrated with respect to tau. And let me tell you something, he had used recursion to solve this right here. And that's pretty fucking dope, to be honest. He had just done um, proof by induction backwards, you could say. <laughs> proof by um, yeah, backwards induction then probably. Why not take the difference of those two integrals and see what we get. So i n minus i n minus one. What is going to give us? Well, we have this common factor of one over two times pi. Also, we have the same up and lower bound, so we can make use of the linearity of the integral to bring those two together. Also, the cool thing is we have the same denominator down here. So over sine of tau over two. Also, we are integrating with respect to tau. And then we have this chunk right here. So this is the sine of n plus one half times tau minus the sine of n minus one half times tau, okay? Let's bring this d tau right here. And well, I have derived a certain addition formula to derive the phi air kernel in the first place, but we can actually make use of this right here. So if you have the different sine of a minus sine of b, it's going to give us two times sine of a minus b over two times the cosine of a plus b over two. So this is nothing but one over two times pi, integral from negative pi to pi. 
Okay, now we have two times the sine of a minus b. n times tau minus n times tau is just going to give us zero. And then we have one half times tau, negative, negative, so plus one half times tau is going to give us just tau. Okay, it's going to give us the sine of tau over two. We have a minus b over two times the cosine of a plus b over two. Okay, what is it going to give us? So we have n times tau plus n times tau is going to give us two times n times tau. And then we have tau over two times tau plus this chunk, so this is just going to vanish. So this is going to give us two times n times tau over two, which is just n times tau. Take a piece of paper and try it out for yourself. As always, it's a lot of talking right here. Not good. And the really cool thing is by this addition theorem, this is going to cancel out. Also, we can bring the two to the outside, basically. So this is just going to be one over pi times the integral from negative pi to pi of, well, cosine of n times tau integrated with respect to tau. And if you know a bit of, about periodicity, you might notice that this thing is just going to be zero, but we can also derive it. If we just integrate this cosine, it's going to be sine integrated. Let's bring the one over n to the outside. So this is one over n times pi in this case. And then we have the sine of n times tau from negative pi to pi. So the sine of n times tau, so um, n times pi, so pi is looking like this right here. At zero, at pi, at negative pi, blah, blah, blah. It's always going to be zero. So on this upper bound, it's just going to be zero. On this lower bound, it's going to be zero. So overall, the difference of those two integrals is just zero, meaning equivalently that i n is nothing but i n minus one. Okay, so you see, this is really cool. So we have shown that this difference of those two integrals of the n and n minus one degree is nothing but, well, zero. So that means both are the same. If we take i n minus one as our new i n, meaning that a, uh, i n minus one is the same as i n minus two, blah, 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 up until i of two being equal to i of one, and then we have i of one being equal to i of zero, but all of those are equal, meaning if we just continue this process, dot, 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 we get that i of n is nothing but i of zero. So <laughs> isn't it absolutely amazing? So we can actually calculate i of zero right here. It's really easy to calculate because we get one over n times the sum running from zero to n minus one integral from negative pi to pi, one over two times pi. And then we get, well, n being zero gives us sine of tau over two over tau over two. This is just going to be one, so d tau in the end. Well, integrating a constant is just a constant itself times tau, in this case, the variable. So this is going to provide us with one over n. And then we have a sum running from zero to n minus one of one over two times pi times tau from negative pi to pi. The upper bound is going to give us pi in the end minus negative pi is going to give us pi. Pi plus pi is two times pi. So actually, this right here is just going to be a one in the end. <laughs> this is absolutely amazing. So just like before, we have derived that this integral is indeed just one, as just a property of those Fourier summability kernels. So we have just one over n times this finite sum of one. Some people don't know how to deal with stuff like this, if you have a one, but just keep this in mind. What is a one? A one is nothing but, well, k to the zero of power. So if we sum this up, we have zero to the zero of power. Right here, it's okay if we just take the limit, it's just going to give us one. So this is one plus one plus one plus one. We are starting at zero to n minus one. You can shift the index if you want from k equals to one to n. So those overall are just n terms. So n times one, meaning this is one plus one plus one, n times, giving us just n. So this is one over n times the sum, which is nothing but n, and this is one. And then we are done. This is one, and then we are done. 
Okay, so you see, <laughs> this is actually pretty quite cool. We had this weird some ability kernel right here, and then we were doing some recursion stuff. Bring it back to the zero of term right here, magically. And yeah, then we get that this is one, and overall this fire kernel up here, this integral over the fire kernel is also just one. This is really dope. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend the channel if you like. Don't forget to check out my new website, there's already some content on there. And don't forget to buy those new merch I created and don't forget to take a look at the subreddit and don't forget to take a look at my Twitter and don't forget to check out my community page on YouTube sometimes and don't forget to check out um, mathematical ploys for flammy boys and don't forget how to and don't forget to check out, I don't know, something else probably. I don't have an Instagram, so don't check out Instagram, but check out my Twitter. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff. Yeah. And up until the next video, have fun the day, I guess. I hope you did enjoy this video. Leave some feedback in the comments, please. Ciao. Mm, hallo, hier ist wieder Bibi's Beauty Palace. Und mm, ach, ist es so schön hier. Mm. Uh, can you see it? <laughs> Selfie. <laughs> Peace. Uh.